Hi Sugar Snaps, welcome to the studio. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I do a lot of basket weaving videos. Okay, Phoebe, thank you for your help. So today I wanted to cover the basic basket weaving tools that I use for almost every basket that I weave with a few extras for specific projects. I'm joined in the studio today by Phoebe, my sister's cat that I'm fostering. Okay, so for reed basketry, I have a few basic tools that I like to have in my workspace ready to hand and I use these throughout the basket weaving process. So for your workspace, you'll want a bath towel and this is a towel that I have specifically for basket weaving as well as a hand towel and I use this to catch any drips under my water bin. You're really not helping much here. You kind of messed up my layout. A water bin, this is a dollar store water bin that I got a couple years ago and it works great to hold lukewarm water for dampening the reed and getting everything wet. I also have a cheap spray bottle. This is to dampen the reed as I'm working. If you are working on something that doesn't fit in your water bin or it's just easier to um, spray down, having a spray bottle to get kind of into the nooks and corners of your basket as you're weaving to keep things damp is very handy. I also have a spoke weight. This is a heavy metal bar that I use to hold the spokes or stakes of a basket in place. It works as a second hand or third hand when I'm doing any sort of weaving that has a lot of different elements to it so that I can build the base. I use a cloth measuring tape to measure out the stakes or spokes for a basket. The flexibility of this measuring tape works really well for reed because you can move it around the lengths of reed. Are you leaving? Okay, goodbye. I also have a straight tip packer. This is like a flat blunt tipped awl so the end is flattened and rounded. This is great for packing your rows tightly together as well as getting into spaces for lashing and for the tucking uh, around the rim. So anything that you need to get between the layers of your rows, a straight tip packer is really handy for that. A number two pencil for marking the stakes, the center of the stakes or doing any notes on the stakes or as you're weaving is handy to have nearby. I have a craft knife. This is a foldable one, but any kind of craft knife works great. You could even use an X-Acto knife if you wanted for trimming down the rims or doing any sort of trimming throughout the basket process. This is probably my favorite basket weaving tool. These are basket tree shears or floral shears. They have a short blade, which gives you lots of leverage. Different sizes of reed can be thicker and the shorter blades make it easier to cut through thick, like five eighths inch flat oval reed is fairly thick. And so the short blades, that leverage that you get makes it easy to cut through those thicker reeds, which makes it easier on your wrist. I use two different types of two inch spring clamps. The first is two inch metal clamps, and these are just hardware store basic clamps that have a spring inside so that they open and close and they have a nice grip so I can clamp different rows in place or um, clamp things so that they don't shift around as I'm doing my weaving. I also use two inch plastic clamps and these are best used for rims because they have the space in the middle so that they can go over the different layers of the rim when you're basket weaving without causing grooves in the reed. The metal clamps, they're so t the teeth are so tight together that they create indentations into the reed and I don't like how that looks, so I like to use the plastic clamps. They're just a little bit weaker. They still hold everything in place. The space in the middle eliminates any kind of grooves on the reed. And lastly, if you're doing Carolina snowflakes or anything where you need glue, maybe even to reinforce a D handle, the base of a D handle, I like to use Gorilla Wood Glue. This glue dries, not totally clear, but it works well against the reed color. So I use this and just the basic paintbrush to apply it when I'm doing my Carolina snowflakes or any other 
repairs. If you are starting out in basket weaving and you don't want to invest in all of these different tools, there are some alternatives that you can use. In exchange for the spoke weight, you could use a piece of wood, a length of wood that has some weight to it, or even a hammer. You can lay the hammer out on top of your spokes. Something that will hold down your spokes or your stakes as you're weaving just to keep things in place. In exchange for the packer, you can use a flat head screwdriver or even a pencil would work just to get into the different layers and move things around. You could use kitchen scissors or craft scissors instead of basketry shears. They probably won't be as easy to work with, but it's definitely a good alternative. And if you don't want to invest in metal or plastic clamps, you can use office supply binder clips. So these are clamps used for holding papers, but you can use them as an alternative to the clamps when you're doing your basket weaving and putting the rim together. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot to get into basket weaving. Just like any other craft, there are a ton of other tools that you can collect and build your range of resources. But these are the tools that I use consistently. I don't find a need for very many other tools in even more complex baskets. So I stick with this in my toolbox. These tools don't take up a lot of space. You can pretty much store everything in your water tub after you're done doing your weaving and put, put this away until you're ready to weave another basket. And there's your toolkit ready to go for your next basket weaving project. On my Etsy shop, Textile Indie Supplies, I have a number of these different tools available as well as toolkits with the basic tool essentials. If you're interested, you can check the description below for links to those tools as well as my resource page on my website, textileindie.com with all the resources I use for basket weaving tools and materials. Check out my basket weaving playlist. I have a basket weaving techniques playlist as well as baskets to weave with tutorials on different baskets and also check out my basket a month club you can go to my website the links in the description below and check out my basket a month club which is a number of different tiers you can sign up for and each month I will send you either a instruction manual or an instruction manual with a video tutorial and there's even a tier where I'll send you the manual the video and a basket kit per month so that you can work through a collection of 12 baskets and each basket builds on the skills that you've learned in previous months. So you end up with 12 baskets, exploring lots of different basket weaving techniques and growing your knowledge of basket weaving so that you can weave your own designs in reed basketry. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. Phoebe and Sasha have now abandoned me. I don't know where they're at, so I better go check on them. Until next time, happy weaving, and I'll see you later.